Okay, so we're going to edit together this Milky Way photo that I took last night in the swamp. I took the foreground at the swamp, and then uh, because I used the star tracker, um, I took the, the background somewhere else because I have that option. And I, I'll show you what I mean. Um, so let's, let's look at a Milky Way photo that I took last night. Let's see. You'll see what I mean. Like, okay, this is a this is an example of a foreground, and the stars are all blurred. That's pretty bad. Then you turn the star tracker on. Now you have a blurry ground, but a clear sky. So. That's that's pretty much why I have to take a different foreground and background, and because I have to, uh, that gives me the option to experiment a little bit. I mean, my uh, foreground doesn't necessarily have to face southeast anymore, and I'm just going to have fun with that. So let me show you how I put this together. We're going to start with my swamp foreground. I took at least four photos. Looks like ISO 500, 24 millimeters at one minute each. All right, so I'm going to start with the first one. I think the edits look okay. I could bring up the shadows a little bit to bring out that uh, the water a little bit more, but you know what? For now, I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to make sure that all of the foreground photos are synchronized. All right, now the next thing we have to do is take all my Milky Way photos and align them in sequitur to remove noise. So I took, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I took nine Milky Way photos and then I put the lens cap on and shot one, two, three, four, five, six uh, photos with the lens cap on just to capture the picture of noise only. And now I'm going to stack all these to reduce the noise. So here we go. Just highlight all these, file, export, and I would put them in their own custom folder. I've already exported everything, so I'm not going to do that again, but you know, that's what I would do. I would essentially go in here and export them into a certain folder and make sure they're TIFF files so they'll be uncompressed. Okay, so let's go to Sequitur and stack these now. All right, so first we add our star images. Let me find the right folder here. Swamp milk for sequitur. There we go. And there's all my Milky Way star images. We'll open those. And now we'll add the dark frames that I took with the lens cap on. Those are just photos of noise that we want to remove. Sweet. Choose our output file. I'm going to put it back in the folder where all the other photos from last night were, so I won't lose them. Leave that right there. Choose that folder and call it Swamp Milk. Yep. Yes. Okay. I just like to turn high dynamic range on just for the fun of it. Okay. I'm not keeping the foreground, so I don't have to worry about aligning anything uh, on the ground, freezing ground. So we'll just hit start. When this is done, we should have a much cleaner image, and I'll show you in Lightroom. All right, now that's done, you can see the foreground is just really all over the place, and I'm glad we're not going to be using that. Let's uh, put it back into Lightroom now. Okay, now we're back in Lightroom, and we've got the the new Milky Way photo put back in here. And let's just look briefly at kind of what stacking does. You might not be able to see it too much, but let's check this out. This is zoomed in on the original um, one of the original Milky Way photos. You can see some kind of colorful noise in these really dark spots. And we come over here to the 
edited one, the stacked one, and you can see the dark spots are much cleaner now. Yeah, just look at all that look at all that noise in there. That's so much cleaner. All right. So we're done with Lightroom for now. Now we're going to go to Photoshop and this is where the juicy stuff really happens. All right. So now we're going to select our foreground photos of the swamp and our Milky Way that has been stacked. Right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, now that that's done, we're going to want to stack our foreground images to get a cleaner image, just like we did with the stars. Let's close this out. I'll need that later. So we'll start by highlighting all the foreground images. Right click, group from layers. Just group them all together. Now let's right click that group and convert to smart object. This usually takes a minute. All right, now that that's a smart object, we are going to go to layer, smart objects, stack mode, mean. This will stack them together and it'll get uh, remove even more noise. We're just trying to get the cleanest image possible. Okay, they are stacked. You can actually see a little um, star blur in there now. Everything's rotating. I was obviously facing north. Everything's rotating around the north star right here. Okay, so now let's blend our uh, Milky Way with our foreground. And this is where the fun stuff happens. So we're going to start by moving our foreground down to the bottom. We're just going to get out of the way because I want to work from a copy. So we're going to click duplicate layer on the foreground. And we're going to move the copy on top. All right. So we've got our foreground copy and then underneath that the stars. Here's where the magic happens. This Extension is something I bought separately, and this is specifically to help me uh, separate my foreground from my background. My goal here is to get my foreground, these trees and everything, white, while my sky is completely black. I want them totally separated. So I just need to play with these sliders a little bit. So I want to get everything in the sky nice and black. Getting close. There we go. That looks good. Now we've got a nice separation from the trees and the sky right here. So next, what we're going to do is click Select. And now all my trees are selected. And click Black Mask. We're creating a mask. If you don't know what masks are, I really can't explain that to you right now. But this is going to help me paint in the foreground while not affecting the stars. OK, so we're going to hide my stars and background layers and we're going to go ahead and paint in the foreground. Make sure a white brush is selected. And here we go. See, uh, it's only painting in what's selected with these little marching ants right here. Really cool method of doing this. And it only takes just a few minutes. Without this extension that I paid maybe 35 bucks for, this probably could have taken an hour. Let's get it all good and paint it in there. Just I'm really focusing on the trees. Everything else can be done easily in just a minute. Let's 
Yeah, I get all this detail in here. Just click it multiple times. Make sure you get it all in there. All right, that's starting to look great. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to press Control D to deselect everything. And I my stars layer is hidden, but I'm going to show it again. I'm going to reveal it. So here we go. Look at that. Now I'm going to finish painting in down here to get it all even. And that just looks lovely, absolutely gorgeous. All right, I'm happy with this. We're going to hit File, Save. Now when we go back to Lightroom, I should be able to edit it in there. Yep, there it is. Okay, so what can we do from here? Well, let's mess around with the sky a little bit. Get my uh, graduated filter here. Just gonna mess around with the sky for a second. A little bit of contrast, bring up some whites to bring out that Milky Way core. A little bit of clarity, a little bit of saturation. All right, happy with that. We just want to do everything kind of subtly here. We don't want to go too crazy. Um, let's bring out the Milky Way itself just a little bit more. We're going to use an adjustment brush. And just a little bit more clarity and saturation. We're just going to paint over the Milky Way just to make it pop a little more. Yeah, that looks nice. I like it. Okay, now we're going to work on the foreground. We can try to lighten that up a little bit. Do another graduated filter here. I'm going to bring up this shadows fader. Yeah, now we can get a little, little more detail down here in this water. Add a little, little noise reduction, just because I was bringing, you know, getting rid of some of those shadows. So we don't want it to get too noisy down there. Oh, the clarity was already up. I don't really want to increase increase the clarity right now. Okay. All right, that looks cool. I'm going to give the image just a a touch of overall clarity and vibrance. I'd like to bring out some more of the Milky Way if I can, so I'm going to try to bring out a little bit of orange. It's really making the water orange, but let's see. There we go. And let's just leave it at that for now. I'm, I'm kind of happy. And there's a lot more things we could do in Photoshop, like remove some of the stars so the Milky Way will be more present, but we're not going to worry about that today. So there you have it. That's that's how I put together a Milky Way photo.